Hey, did you know there's a secret backdoor to starting a coding career that almost no one is talking about? In another video, I talked about three weird ways that you can earn while you learn as a junior developer. And I kind of threw one of these out here at the very end, but this is actually my story of how I got into development. And I think that a lot of you can probably follow a very similar path. So I want to lay that out for you and give you an idea of how you can create your own job right where you are. Hey, junior devs, dev mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. And sometimes that career just starts wherever you're at. If you're currently working for a company that's not a development company, leave a comment below and tell me what industry you're currently working in. There are three things that every developer needs, especially junior developers, when they're trying to get into that first job or they're trying to get into, kind of break into the industry. And that is knowledge, experience, and confidence. Those are the three things that you need. The problem is if you can't get a first job, how in the world are you going to gain knowledge and especially experience and really confidence? Well, that's exactly where I found myself quite a while ago when I first started doing development full time. And I was pretty much in the same place where a lot of you junior developers are right now, where you're struggling to find a job. You, maybe you've gone through some training and you feel like you're ready to take that next step, but nobody's really hiring right now, especially for junior developers. In fact, honestly, I've gotten a lot of questions from people via direct messages, via email. I've got some pretty long emails <laughs> that I could show you from junior developers asking me exactly this same question. How do I take that next step? And unfortunately, there isn't one perfect answer because everybody's looking for something different when it comes from the junior developer perspective and when it comes from an employer perspective. So one of the things that I'm actually really passionate about right now is helping junior developers find a way to break into their current industry, into their current job with their coding experience. So how do we go about doing that? Well, when I first started out, I was working at a call center. I was taking phone calls for a mutual fund company. We were answering questions. A lot of the questions that we answered were kind of basic questions, you know, information. How do I get a hold of this department? Or, you know, where do I mail my money to, you know, things like that. So we'd have a lot of basic questions that were, that were commonly answered. And we had just a notebook uh, that had all those pieces of information in that notebook. And it was a, it was a pretty thick notebook. It probably had, I don't know, 50 pages or so, but it wasn't terrible, but you'd have to constantly be going into that notebook because quite frankly, nobody was going to memorize all of that information. As we were working through uh, our learning process, we were learning all these different systems that we had to use. And we had all these great pieces of technology that we could use to access accounts and, and leave comments and, and provide other information. But we still had this notebook that was just paper. <laughs> that was a notebook full of information that we needed on a daily basis for probably 50 to 80% of the calls that we took. And so one day after I had been learning uh, PHP and MySQL and HTML, CSS and JavaScript and all those things, um, I finally got uh, to the point where I was tired of using that notebook. And I thought maybe there's an opportunity here for me to take some of these things that I've been learning and, and build out just a very simple application that would, we'd be able to find exactly what we wanted to with just a click or, or a couple clicks, or maybe even some search functionality. So I actually went to my manager and I said, Hey, I have an idea to make our job better and faster so that we can be better on the phones. Because one of the things that we needed to do is keep the talk time of our phone calls down. And so I said, we can be faster in finding the information that we need from this notebook. If I can put together a, an application, thankfully he said, yes, that's fine. In fact, he even let me not work on it at home. He said, you can do it while you're at work. Just take a couple hours a day off the phones to work on this project. Unfortunately, I didn't get to take all the time off the phones. I still had to take phone calls, but I got to, to kind of clock out of the phones for, for a few hours a day and work on that. And after about a, a week or two, I had our prototype up and running and, and we started using it here in our group. We had about I think uh, eight or 12 people in, in our group in the call center. 
Um, and so we started using this application in it and it worked and it worked well and, and everybody enjoyed it. And we were able to actually bring our call talk times down a little bit because we didn't have to use that notebook anymore. We could use this application that I had built that I would be really embarrassed to look at today <laughs> after all of these years. And that really is the first step in this process. It doesn't really matter what industry you're in. You don't have to be in a call center. You don't have to be in a development company. You could be uh, working for a lawn care company. You could be working for um, a massage therapist. I mean, all kinds of different things you could be doing. Uh, taxes. I don't know. There, almost any industry is going to have to deal with something in their process that, that doesn't make sense or that they're doing just because they don't have a better option. And that's where you can really step in, especially if you're looking to get into software development or, or web application development, not just building websites, but building things that are functional. You can really find an opportunity in your current job where maybe they need a better process or maybe somebody's always complaining about this current thing that they have to do. And you know, hey, I could build something that could make that a whole lot easier for that person, especially if it's like, the owner that would be really helpful but you need to look for different opportunities to be able to write code that would make somebody else's life easier and at the end of the day that's really what we want to do to to promote this idea is try to create something that's going to make somebody else's life easier it's going to improve a process it's going to make something less difficult to get through or hopefully more enjoyable to do their job most small businesses really need software that's designed for the way that they want to work. But unfortunately, they can't necessarily afford to pay development companies to do that all the time because they just don't make that much profit. But they might be able to afford to pay you, who they're already paying, to do it for them. So I got this opportunity to work on this project and I got the opportunity to do it on the company time and I got the opportunity to build something that was useful. But then another group in the same company uh, heard about what we had that I had developed and they had some other requests from their mutual fund client that they had really wanted to put into the software that our company used, but that was going to take months to get implemented in it. And it was really just kind of like a survey that they wanted to take. And so they asked me if I could build something that would help them to be able to keep track of these responses to questions that they were supposed to ask the people when they were on the phone and, and then just print out a, a little report so that they could give it to uh, this mutual fund company. So my first project became another project that I was able to actually jump on and work on again during company time. Now I didn't get to change my, my role, I was still a, a CSR, a customer service representative, but I got to start doing the thing that I was really wanting to do, which was build custom software. And that's kind of the next step. And it may take a little while for you to get into this. Maybe you'll be given a little bit of time to work on a project, but when they begin to see how your work has helped them, if you can build something that's going to help them, uh, reduce their cost or that's going to help them reduce the time that it takes to do something, then they're going to realize that, that what you have, what you offer is valuable and they're going to give you more and more time to, to make it better. Because let's be honest, the first thing that you build is not going to be perfect. The better you build your first project to actually meet a need, the more time and the better opportunity you'll have to talk them into letting you do that more and more and removing some of those other things that you don't want to do and allowing you to really focus in and basically make it your job to be a developer at the company. So you need to always ask to be able to do the work on the clock as part of what you're getting paid for. And then if you're lucky and they let you, I would ask them if you can change your title to developer or software engineer or something like that so that when you move on, you've actually had a title. So find a need and then build a solution to that need on the clock. Have them pay you, even if it's not what you would make as a real developer, and it's, and it's just what you're currently making, but have them pay you to spend your time doing the thing that you want to do. 
So once I had the knowledge to build those applications and I had the experience of building one and then another and then a third one at that company, they actually moved me into a new role in that company to be able to help them build a company wide knowledge base for all the different groups, both in that location and in a location in Boston. I was part of a team of people that helped design that interface and how how we would interact with it. But more importantly, it gave me the confidence to know, hey, I can actually do this stuff. So when the opportunity came along to actually go and leave that company and do a freelance job full time and build an even bigger piece of software for another organization, I was able to jump at that opportunity because I knew that I had the knowledge, that I had the experience, and I was confident that I could actually do the work. And that's the third step to using the back door to get into a coding career. The, you need to ask them if you can change your title to something that makes more sense for a software developer. For me, they just changed it to a project coordinator, which wasn't that great. It wasn't really software engineer, but I didn't go into a normal business. I was freelance after that. So it didn't really matter too much, but if you can get them to change your title over time to developer or software engineer or something like that, that shows that you've actually held a position regardless of what the pay was, but shows that you've held a position that had that title and you can talk about experience of actually building a product and helping your company uh, either with their processes or make more money or have lower costs or whatever it is that that software does. If you can talk about that, then you have knowledge, you have experience and you have confidence for when you do then decide to go out there and put your resume out again and start looking for a real developer job. But here's the other cool thing, depending on where you're at, you might actually be able to turn that job into a real development job at that company. You may be able to convince them, hey, this is really what a software developer makes. This is what I'm worth. I've already built something for you, but it's going to need maintenance. It's going to need us to be able to iterate on it. We're going to need to make it better over time. We're going to need to, to add things to this and we can add things to this to make it even better and more useful for the company. You might even be able to just turn that job into a higher paying job right there at that company. And they don't have to go out and find some other development company to do the work. They've already got you in house and you just get a raise. So in my opinion, the best way to kind of walk through the back door of getting a job in coding is to wherever you are, find a problem in that company that you know, you can, you can solve with code, with a, with an application that you write, get permission to use your time at the company that they're paying for to build that product for them, to build that solution for them, and then use that knowledge and experience and confidence to help take you to the next level in your career as a junior developer. Now, while you're doing all that, you may find yourself trying to implement some form of artificial intelligence, especially nowadays. That's really big buzzwords, no matter what industry you're in. But if you do, you just need to remember that Artificial intelligence is really just a puppy. Check out this video here to find out what in the world I mean by AI being a puppy. Hey, if you find this content helpful and you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and, and click the bell icon to be notified the next time I upload a video. And thank you for spending time with me today. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.